Ben bir Müslüman bu toldum, Müslüman bu ölüşünü kalayım ha. Lakin ben uygur boğunum gazır, pakın. O onda kal ölüm ne olup biz acızlık kahan seri biz ne ölürdük ya. Tursunazia Dun is part of the Turkic ethnic group known as the Uyghurs, Chinese Muslims who mostly live in the northwest province of Xinjiang. There are about 12.8 million Uyghurs who live there. And human rights groups say that many have become victims of crimes against humanity at the hands of the government. China is accused of imprisoning over 1 million Uyghurs in re-education camps, sexual abuse, and even forced sterilization. Zia Dun says she spent 11 months in jail for no stated reason. She was sexually assaulted and tortured. Communist Party officials have attributed their treatment of the Uyghurs to the war on terror. In 2008, the region suffered multiple terrorist attacks linked to the East Turkestan independence movement, which is a faction within the Uyghur community that wants Xinjiang to separate from China and form its own state. But human rights advocates say that terrorism is just an excuse. The Chinese have oppressed the Uyghurs as part of their push for radical conformity. The government describes the camps as focused on re-education and career training. In 2017, when the crackdown intensified, Uyghurs were targeted for wearing headscarves, for abstaining from drinking alcohol, and for displaying abnormal behaviors like purchasing dumbbells. Some attribute the Chinese government push for conformity to capitalism and Beijing's desire to staff factories, increase production, and surpass the U.S. on the global stage. But the Chinese Communist Party says its goal is to build a modern socialist country, and that description is more apt. China seeks to impose one identity, culture, and language on all of its 1.37 billion people, erasing that which does not conform. From the policies of Mao to those of Lenin and Stalin, when command and control societies impose uniformity, it inevitably leads to human rights violations. Zia Dun says that she felt as if the Chinese government set out to eradicate her culture and ethnicity. The Chinese government has ever more sophisticated tools of surveillance at its disposal and it allegedly provides local authorities with lists that detail how to identify extremists. In Zia Dun's case, she says she was arrested when she returned to Xinjiang from Kazakhstan, where she had been living with her Kazakh husband. Zia Dun says she was released after her husband advocated on her behalf. She made it to the U.S. under the protection of the Uyghur Human Rights Project, an organization that seeks to promote the rights of the Uyghur and other Turkic Muslims from Xinjiang. Today, Zia Dun lives in a suburb of D.C. She says that her heart aches for her family and the other Uyghurs back home, millions of whom are still being imprisoned, tortured, and surveilled in their most private spaces, including their living rooms, dining areas, and prayer spaces, according to one report. <laughs> Although the U.S. has condemned the mistreatment of the Uyghurs and government officials are boycotting the Beijing Olympics in protest, we've admitted zero new Uyghur refugees in the last two years. 
Welcoming foreigners like Zia Dun is what has allowed the U.S. to avoid becoming a monoculture. And our diversity of thought and experience is the secret of American capitalism. China is erasing of the Uyghur culture and its decision to surveil, imprison, and torture the Uyghur people in pursuit of becoming the leading global superpower isn't just morally abhorrent. It won't work.